So let's talk about why tonality or how I use tonality. I'm not going to say why it's my favorite. It just is, but you'll see some of the things I like about it. So this is AUM. I have it set up right now. If you look over here, I have it set up, I'm sorry, to go through Adam. So I to be triggered, I'm sorry, Adam, to be triggered by tonality. That's what I meant to say. So you'll see that. And then I route it straight into the piano through Adam. So it's like this. It's basically the pads going into Adam, which is MIDI, right? And then going into Pure Synth, which is my instrument. So Pure Synth, one of the things I love about it is just the sound is amazing. But outside of that, you have options. You can move, make your sound more mellow or pad, reverse, cinematic, bright, or even percussive, or just the intimate feel. It's pretty nice. And But I, a lot of times what I'll do is just add a reverb over the top of it. So I'll use like Tone Booster, which I dig because Tone Booster is on the uh, iPhone 2 the iPhone so you can use it on your iPhone and I think it's pretty cool but anyway I use the Hall Lively Reverb I think that's a good reverb to go with to give it more of a real feel and since I don't have any instruments or any uh, drums going right now I do have everything instrument routed into Koala so therefore I'll need to press the headphones in order to be able to hear these instruments being played but we're just doing this primarily to focus on tonality, but I just kind of showed you how I would set it up. So tonality has options. When you click the three uh, dashes up top, obviously there's scale chords, there's inspiration, chord progressions. Patch storage is something you have to sign up for at patchstorage.com. And then there's all these user ones that I've made for myself. But we're just going to keep going with the empty 4x4 four four that you see right there, the factory preset. And that gives us a nice little start. So a lot of times when I come in, I may have an idea of one chord that I like, or I may not, just depends. But if you click a pad, it gives you an option either to choose a chord of which you can kind of tailor it, or you can create a custom pad if you know your chords and really know something that you want to use. I'm not going to do all that. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the basis of just getting started. That, that will be for a later one. I may do another video on that. But if you go to scale chords, there's an interesting thing here. So you have triads, sevenths, and then ninths, right? And then you have different key or different options as far as whether you want to be major, minor, Dorian, so on and so forth. Primarily going to stay in the major just because it will be easy. We'll use seventh chords today. You can include secondary dominance if you want. I'm not going to do it right now just because... The video, I'm not trying to be here all day doing that. So I'm going to pick the scale that I want. In this particular case, I'm just going to pick D. That's fine. And then I'm going to click the word create with the exclamation, which is in the right-hand corner. So now I have the scale chords. So the scale is D. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chord, right? So you have all the chords. And what's cool about it is, is now you can just make a song. So if you know, like most songs are one, four, five pop songs, then you know you just pick the one, the four, and the five, right? It's pretty simple. But these chords obviously can be altered if you want. But this is just a starting basis for some people that want to know. Now, one of the things that's really cool that I like about tonality is if you click the little wheel in the right hand corner up top these are all your settings if you look at sustain i like my sustain on latch holds the cord until you release it i like the sustain to be on it's kind of nice right you feel like you have that foot pedal action going on i leave trigger velocity on randomize velocity so that's a cool feature you could do if you want to randomize the chords, and you can even randomize the attack a little bit. I'm going to leave those off for right now. I'm going to show you something a little different. 
I usually have MIDI through on. And where it says overlap modes, I like to have mine to send all. That way it doesn't miss a note, typically. And then I'll click done. And then the editing tools can be found in two different places. Either you can go to the pencil. If you touch the lighter side, it'll allow you to edit. If you touch the this side, you can just play it, right? And then below, there's a bar where you can touch. If you touch and then touch a pad, it'll either delete it or you can copy it or you can do all those features. I'm not going to go through every one because it'll, I'll be here for a little bit. You can practice with those and probably get pretty good. And, and I'll show you some tricks and stuff later that I like to do, but I need to see it. I don't see the notes. So up in right below the pencil editor is a piano. You can drop the piano down just leave it on. So that way you can see it, right? So you see where the notes are hitting. You can add a bass note. I will show you that if you look down to the right where by, by the sustain, there is a this little stop with the or circle with the slash is to actually delete a chord. But if you swipe up, you can see there's different features. All your tools are there. Swipe down and it goes backwards. The one right here that I have now, which is the three little circles, is actually a bass note. So I'm gonna add a bass note to every chord by just holding it down and then touching each chord. So now you'll see, as you can see right there, there's a bass note. So I like that. Now, now I can play. But say like this chord for some reason, of course, stuff flashing on, I should turn those notifications off. It's not really hitting right with me. So I'm going to take my tools at the bottom here. Again, I'm using this space because it's just a little bit easier. And these down, the dash with the arrow moves it up or down an octave, right? So if it's up, it's up. If it's down, it's down. So I'm going to move that one. I'm going to hold it down and touch. Now we're down an octave. I like that. It's a little, it's a little bit nicer to me. All right, you'll see me swiping through just to move back to the stop. But I don't, I want to play with some velocity, but I want to control the velocity of where it hits. So right next to velocity, this bar that I'm moving is pretty much just a, vo a master volume bar. You could call it that. But if I click the three dots, now I have control over how, how the velocity hits on the axis of that pad. So I'm going to go, you'll see me, I like to use bottom to the top. This is in Beatmaker 3. When you turn on velocity, it'll do the same thing. So I, I'm used to that. So I'll use the bottom to the cop, top. And then I'll, if you see here, I touch, you'll see the volume, velocity meter rather, I'm sorry, going up and down wherever I hit the pad. You can have it go left to right or however you want. So I'm going to hit done there. And now... gives me some velocity a little more natural feeling so that's pretty cool I love that actually that's one of my favorite things this little lock up in the right hand corner which I know you can't see my hand but it's right below the settings wheel if you touch that it will remove those extra pads so that way your hands doesn't accidentally hit but in order to edit anything you have to go out of the lock mode but you can see here I can touch in the black area down here and nothing happens. But then if I unlock it, it brings it back. So that's a pretty cool feature for that purpose. So let's play something.
So we'll just make up something. One, six. We'll just do a one, six, four, five. Something really simple. So obviously in, in here, if you ever used AUM and you used Atom before, if you ever have, you hit record. I have set up for eight bars. You can change your bars down to four. I'm just going to do four right now just for the sake of this recording. So I like a count in. I like to hit my metronome on the three dots here. You'll see a pre-roll right beneath time signature. Just turn it to one bar, right? So that you have something. Because I don't have drums to play off of, so I have to go off of the metronome to keep time and purposes. So I'll hit this, it'll count me in four, and then I'll play some chords. So it missed the first note. And you know, I noticed that sometimes that Adam does that. Even when I play on my keyboard, sometimes it'll miss if you don't trigger it right. So what I do is just go ahead, hit play again. I know the first chord was the, um, in this case, was the D major 7. So I'm just going to hit it again. funny at the same time. There we go. So I'm going to turn the metronome off just for now because I don't want to hear it ticking when I pray it. But Sometimes I'll add like a little swing on the, on this. So that's cool for chords, right? You might say, well, that's all I can do with this. Well, actually, you can do a little bit more. There's some interesting features, and we'll talk about that on the next video. I think this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it there. But just know, simple things like putting chord pads together, and then I will show this. The plus sign up here is to save it. So you can change the name from scale chords to whatever you want it to be, D major uh, chords, whatever, seventh chord however you want to call it but that's the point is you can save your presets all right i think that's enough